What's up friends, hope you all are doing well and staying creative. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite plugins for beefing up sub bass. I've used this plenty of times on bass lines to bring out that visceral feeling, and this is my go-to plugin in mastering when I feel that a track just doesn't have enough of that low end weight and punch. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so the plugin that I'm talking about is called BX Subfilter by Brainworks. I've been using this for actually like two, three years now, and it never really occurred to me to make a video on it until now, but I, I love this plugin. It's very simple to use, but super effective, which is like the best kind of plugin. So it's got three main controls. You have this tight punch control, a resonance control, and then this low end output. So what this tight punch is doing is that it's adding a resonant high pass filter that's gonna emphasize those low frequencies and then you can control that resonance with this switch here. So you got low, high, and then extreme. So, you know, just to kind of show you what that might look like, it's adding an EQ, a little high pass, but then it's adding this resonance here. So this resonance is what's creating that, you know, oomph in the low end. And the real magic is with this low end control, because this low end is then adding a band pass, probably something like this, to then tame the low frequencies, or if you want to further exaggerate it, you know, you can boost it. Normally what I find myself doing is turning up the tight punch and then turning down low end control to keep the bass from getting too boomy. So let's look at this example here. I'll show you two examples. One, this first one is going to be on a master and the second one is just going to be on a bass line. Okay, so I have a track here. It's by Never Alone in a Dark Room. This is a track off an LP I mastered that got on Darko Form Records. So if you want to go check that out, I'll put a link in the description below. So anyway, this is how the plugin comes by default. You know, you have your low end at zero, tight punch off, and the resonance is high. Um, when it comes to mastering, most of the time I keep the resonance on low. Otherwise, it just becomes a little bit too much and uh, uh, you kind of lose a bit of the control of the bass. Um, so let's just, let's just take a listen to it without the plugin on. So. You know, there's sub in this track, but it's not really coming through. Um, it doesn't have that, that fullness in the low end. So let's start bringing up this tight punch. Now it's really coming through, but it's a little too boomy. So I'm gonna bring down the low end. To about there. So now it's nice and controlled and we can, let's A, B it on and off. So here's it with it off. plugin really just fills out that bottom octave and gives a lot more presence and fullness to the bass, but without, without it being too overpowering or boomy or muddy. And that's really because of this low end control. Without the low end control, if you keep that at zero, there's a lot of bass, but you know, it's, it's slamming into the limiter. It's a little just, you know, kind of flabby, it's loose. Um, but with this low end control, bringing it down quite far, which is usually what I find myself doing. I bring this low end control down to like, sometimes even all the way down to like negative 10. And that way you're getting that extension, but it's not overpowering and it's still very balanced. All right, so here is the second example. This is from one of my tracks. It's a collaboration between me and my friend Seraphim. We have a duo called Sarasai. So this will be coming out sometime in January. Um, and I used BXL filter on the bass line here. So let's just take a listen to the track and then I'll solo the bass line. So I'm using BX subfilter here on this Moog baseline. And the Moog already has, you know, some nice sub to it, but I just want to give it a little bit more presence and fullness down to the low lows, like, you know, like 40 Hertz, where you're going to really feel it on a big system. So I have the low end control all the way down here. Tight punch is around 39. Resonance is low. So it is a little, a little more subtle. So here's with it off. I'm using this more subtly, but let me show you what the potential of this plugin is if you don't use it subtly. Because if you do have like a sound that's 
doesn't have that kind of low end energy that the Moog has and you want to bring it up, you really can. So I'm going to just turn this up. Okay. Now you really hear the sub coming through. Turn it off. And this is obviously a very extreme case and because the Moog already has so much low end, it just gets crazy. But if you have a, like I said, if you have a sound that doesn't have this kind of low end, you can really turn this low end uh, control up. And it just gives you all this, this bottom end weight. Um, and this tight punch, yeah, I like to leave it around somewhere between 35 and 42 hertz. I find that for most stuff, that kind of works the best. Because again, this, it is doing a high pass filter. So if you start putting it up more around like, you know, 60, 50, 60 hertz, you're gonna lose some of the real bottom octave. So I find that around 40, 35 to 40 Hertz is a nice uh, nice area for it because you're accentuating the frequencies that really matter when it comes to most music, especially dance music. That 40 to 50 Hertz range is very critical and that's where you get a lot of that sub impact. So yeah, there you have it. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.